academia is broken. If you're a researcher, you already feel it. The unpaid labor, the paywalls, it goes on and on. But what if I was to tell you that this isn't just a failed system, it's rigged. But now a huge lawsuit has just exposed the biggest names in publishing for allegedly running a cartel. They're not just profiting off free labor from academics, they could be violating antitrust laws. We don't like that, those sneaky all right then, let's check it out. So, there is a huge lawsuit against publishers and this is the lawsuit here. It was uh, filed at the end of last year, but ultimately it's this person and a class action complaint against all of the big uh, publishers that are colluding, apparently. So this was brought to my attention by a viewer. Thank you so much, Mary. So let's get into it. The actual lawsuit is sort of like Dr. Lucina Uden, and here she is, what an absolute champion to be taking this on on behalf of academics and a class action lawsuit and here are all of the publishers that they are suing at the moment. So ultimately this is what's happening. The uh, scientist is bringing a, an antitrust class action lawsuit to challenge collusion amongst all of those people and apparently they are in violation of the Sherman Act by conspiring to unlawfully appropriate billions of dollars that would otherwise have funded scientific research. We don't like that. And here are the biggest claims from the lawsuit. The first biggest one is they're not paying you for your peer review. So academic publishers are fixing the price of peer review at zero. That means you do the peer review as a researcher. You spend time looking over someone else's work and what do they want to give you? <laughs> Big fat nothing. All of that work, all of that expertise put to waste. And why? Well, they want to keep the money in their pockets, don't they? So here, the publishers are accused of colluding by a trade association to ensure that peer reviewers who do all of the heavy lifting and validating of research are never compensated, despite the service being absolutely essential to their billion dollar businesses. Without peer reviewers, there are no peer reviewed journals and these companies do not want to give you a cent for doing it. Absolutely atrocious and a little bit of a kind of snippet from the lawsuit says it perfectly. Here, in the world of publish or perish, um, the publisher defendants essentially agreed together, colluded, to hold the careers of scholars hostage so that they could force them to provide their valuable labor for free. Don't get me wrong, sometimes you're like, oh, I should peer review because it's good for my career. They know that and they're using it against you. God damn it. Stop it. All right, then let's look at the next one. Scholars are giving away the IP and the rights to the work as soon as they sign it over, whether or not it's going to get published or not. Check this out. So authors must sign away all intellectual property rights in exchange for, you guessed it, a big fat <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing again. What are we gained from this? Uh, apparently the ability to be like, hmm, I published in nature. Is it even worth it anymore? All right then. So the lawsuit alleges that from the moment a manuscript is submitted, the publisher behaves as if it owns the research. They don't even know if they want to publish it, but they're like, oh, it's mine. You can't have it. I don't know why they're so mean. Why are they so mean? Enforcing strict gag rules and acquiring the relinquishment of copyrights one accepted. Some even enforce 12 to 36 month embargoes before scholars can even share their work. In the world of research and science and innovation, a 12 month embargo on being able to talk about that work is not only hurting people's careers, it's hurting real outcomes for real people through the result of just keeping it behind closed doors. Absolutely terrible. I do not like this at all. So that's number two. What about this next one? It's just as bad. So you may be thinking to yourself, well, Andy, they're running a business. They've got to make a profit, but this much profit? They are earning more than the biggest tech giants in the world. Check this out. Elsevier's 2023 profit margin was 38%. And if you're thinking that's a lot, it is because it's higher than Apple at 30% and higher than Google at 25%. And that year alone, 10 billion plus dollars in revenue was generated by the six publishers and they offloaded all the content. Get this. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's so crazy that this is where we're at. They offloaded all the creation, the quality control, the distribution to unpaid or publicly funded academics and then selling the product back to them at the institution. It seems like an absolute raw. I don't know why, why have we allowed this to happen? It's just crazy. It's crazy, but I'm so pleased that this is being brought to light and people have tried, we're trying to make them accountable. Um, so crazy, 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 crazy. Check this next one out. I, oh, it gets worse. Just imagine you're a researcher. You've just done amazing research, but you can't tell anyone because of Publishers. All right. So the gag rule slows scientific progress. Scientists are prohibited from sharing their own discoveries, even with peers during review. The lawsuit says that this results in months or years of delay for critical research. Now, during COVID, what happened? The scientific community banded together to get over a huge uh, sort of research hurdle and Without all the journals saying, oh, you can't talk about that, don't say this. We made the fastest um, progress that I've ever, ever seen. And here, during COVID-19, publishers temporarily relax these rules. And the result, oh, what could the result be of allowing scientists to talk about all of their work? Well, it was the fastest vaccine development in human history. That is what's possible without these stupid restrictions. Progress. Oh, who would have thought? And now this is probably the worst thing, is that we pay three times for the research. Check this out. So there is a triple pay system funded by taxpayers, by people who receive government funding, then have to do work they for free to get it published, and then they buy that work back. It's just crazy. So um, Deutsche Bank apparently sort of like wanted to talk about this for some reason, and the state funds the research, pays the reviewers, and then buys back the final product so that then the researchers can read what they've peer-reviewed before it is, it's just insane. It's, it's, it's insanity. So here, um, uh, Deutsche Bank said, the government are paying three times for the same researchers. Taxpayers fund the experiments. Good. Tick. We like that. Yeah. We want funded projects. Projects that help people get better, improve in some way, make the world a better place. That's what we want. And then they, the peer review labor via salaries. So remember, these scientists are not working necessarily for free. They're using the money that the government gives them as part of their job to review the papers because their salary's got to come from somewhere. So there we are, two ways, but there's another way as well. And then they pay again through university subscriptions or even open access fees. So you can pay to get a journal article onto your computer, or you can do what we're always encouraged to do, which is do open access. Open access, pay a fee to the journal so that they can disseminate it for free. We like that, but it comes at a cost to who? The taxpayer, the researcher, at nearly $10,400 per article in some instances. What? What, what, what? Uh, anyway, if this isn't some sort of crazy, schemey, scammy cartel business, I don't know what is in my opinion. So the biggest thing is harm to scientific progress. Delays in peer review and restrictions on knowledge sharing have slowed advancements in medicine, material assignments, client solutions, and more. We are suffering a delay for no reason because of simple corporate greed that is so out of control that they're earning more money than the biggest tech giants in the world at the moment. For what? What do you get? What do you get access to the stuff that you've already peer reviewed? Just insane. I, it's crazy. And so what does this lawsuit try to do? Well, the lawsuit aims to dismantle this exploitative system and seek justice for scholars who contribute to science without the fair compensation or control over their work. We want to put an end to this. It's going to be a long fight. It's going to be a, a very expensive and time consuming fight, but it's one well worth having because if we can get to the other end of this and disseminate our research without the burden or the journals owning information 
or telling us we can't talk about our research. The world will only, only get better and the, their pockets will no longer just be filled with all of the money that could have gone to funding other research. It's crazy that it's got to this point, but this lawsuit is trying to change that and I respect it. Let everyone know this is happening because I think this is a big deal. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about how academia is broken and the publishing scandal that continues to this very day. Go check it out.